Hi, my name is Li Ray. Today I'm going to introduce my FYP project, Watermarking for Combating Deepfake, supervised by Prof Lin and his PhD student, Mr. Hong Jingwen. Nowadays, deepfake has acquired the ability to produce lifelike fake images, producing great concerns in the society. Then what do we do to combat deepfake? The mainstream approaches have been training deepfake detection model to identify deepfake images. However, the problem is that even if identified in the end, irreparable damage may already be done. A better approach is to apply adversarial noise as image watermark. When a watermarked image is modified, it will be distorted so that we can tell whether an image is fake or not. However, to ensure the level of distortion, current work set the noise threshold relatively high, leaving visible noise on the face and impairing image quality. Thus, the goal of this work is to improve watermark visual quality and maintain its protection performance. Studies show that humans only realize changes of an image when the difference reaches a certain level, denoted by the just noticeable difference. This means that noise allocation under JND is safe and will not be realized. Thus, we would also like to explore this in our work. The JND model we choose to estimate JND for an image is enhanced just noticeable difference model for images with pattern complexity. In experiments, we found out that the idea of pattern complexity adapts well to portrayed images. Areas like hair are of higher pattern complexity and thus have higher noise tolerance. Areas like skin are of lower pattern complexity and thus have lower noise tolerance. To study how the JND values are distributed on portrait images, we segment images into different parts and compute their average JND values. On the results, we can see that allocating noise to portrait images can be a challenging task as many parts on the face have a low tolerance for noise. In adversarial attacks, noise is claimed to ensure it does not exceed a defined threshold epsilon. Because JND denotes the noise that can be safely tolerated without being noticed in each position, we can utilize this to set our threshold. However, a fixed threshold will not work here, as to ensure the noise is not visible, the threshold needs to be bounded by the smallest JND, making the noise allocable too small to be useful. Thus, a better choice would be replacing the threshold with a JND map and perform a JND clamp instead. The work we based our modification on is CMUA, Cross Model Universal Attack Method developed by Huang. It can exploit common adversarial pattern among models and images and produce watermark effective for multiple images against multiple modification models. Thus, we replace the threshold claim in the framework, the JND claim, to find out the common JND patterns among images. However, because JND for portrait images are generally small, this will cause noise allocable too small to be effective and result in poor protection performance. To mitigate such issue, intuitively, we would like to relax such restriction. We could relax such restriction by scouting the JND, however, it would be too hard to strike the right balance between the noise allowed and image quality. It can be seen that the visual quality differs a lot for gamma equals 1 and gamma equals 2. To solve this problem, the solution we come up with is phase semantics based JND scaling. We segment the image into different parts and set scaling parameters differently on different parts. By doing such, we could strike the right balance in visual quality between gamma equals 1 and gamma equals 2. As the goal of this work is to improve visual quality while maintaining protection performance, experiments are designed to investigate whether we have achieved our goal. Therefore, two experiments are designed, comparing visual quality and protection performance with previous methods respectively. We implement our methods following this process. First, we perform a parameter searching to find a promising parameter range. Then, we do an analysis. After that, we conduct another parameter searching with refined parameter range to locate the best parameters. The dataset we used is the test set of Celeb A. We use the first 128 images for training and test on the whole dataset. Four modification models are selected for the implementation, and the parameters we use for scaling are listed here. The metrics we choose for evaluating visual quality is SSIM, as it may be better in reflecting the visual quality perceived by people. However, SSRM fails to consider the visual attention we pay to the face. 
An example is shown here. In image A, noise is only allocated to the face, and in image B, noise is only allocated to the background. Although with both higher PSNR and SSIM score, it is still hard to conclude that image A has much better visual quality than image B. Thus, we also consider SSRM score on face only by segmenting the face out and name it as SSRM face score. For evaluating protection performance, we consider an image as successfully protected when the distortion level in the modification area is larger than the value we defined. The protection performance is measured by the percentage of successfully protected image in the test set. In the results, we can see that our method achieves both better protection performance and visual quality compared to CMUA, achieving the goal we set. In the qualitative results, we can see that while CMUA leaves obvious noise in the face, our method handles it better. While we share the same level of noise on the hair and the background, our method achieves much better visual quality on the face. The key reason why we could achieve both better visual quality and protection performance is that, by face semantic strain descaling, we limit noise allocation to the face and allocate more noise on the hair and the background. For the protective effect, while we sacrifice a little bit of distortion level, our method still achieves enough distortion to differentiate a fake image. Thus, compared with CMUA, our method achieves better visual quality and is able to guard more images against modification. Therefore, in conclusion, we achieved the goal we set for this work, improving watermark visual quality and maintaining its protection performance. In conclusion, noticing the visual defects in watermarks, we explore the probability of exploiting the property of JND and develop face semantics-based JND scouting to boost for better visual quality and protection performance.